Welcome to part three in our lecture series on gluconeogenesis. This tutorial will cover the final three enzymatic reactions that differ in gluconeogenesis. Phosphoenopyruvate carboxykinase is classified as a lyase enzyme and exists in two isozymes, a cytoplasmic phosphoenopyruvase carboxykinase and a mitochondrial phosphoenopyruvase carboxykinase. The cytoplasmic form is the one that is predominantly used in the gluconeogenic pathway. However, small amounts of phosphoenopyruvate can be transported across the mitochondrial membrane. The reaction mediated by phosphoenopyruvate carboxykinase is the conversion of oxaloacetate to phosphoenopyruvate using GTP as the phosphate donor. The enzyme also releases carbon dioxide. Cytoplasmic phosphoenopyruvate carboxykinase is largely regulated at the transcriptional level, where increases in gene expression are seen in response to elevated cyclic AMP levels, increased glucocorticoids, and increased thyroid hormone levels. Decreased gene expression is caused by insulin signaling ADP also acts as an allosteric effector of the protein, causing it to have lower activity. The last two unique enzymes of the gluconeogenic pathway are both phosphatase enzymes. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase converts fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, and glucose 6-phosphatase converts glucose 6-phosphate into free glucose. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate requires a metal cofactor and is competitively and allosterically regulated. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and low energy load, AMP or ADP, inhibit the enzyme. The dephosphorylation of glucose, as we learned previously in our glycogen metabolism lectures, only occurs appreciably in liver cells as this is the primary location for the regulation of blood glucose levels. This serves as the final step in the gluconeogenic pathway. Glucose 6-phosphate is transported into the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum through transporter T1. The glucose 6-phosphatase then cleaves the phosphate from the substrate, releasing inorganic phosphate and glucose. The inorganic phosphate is then transported back into the cytoplasm through transporter 2, and glucose is transported through transporter 3. Free glucose is then transported back into the bloodstream through a glucose GLUT transporter, not shown in the diagram. The final two novel reactions in the gluconeogenic pathway are both hydrolase reactions involving the hydrolysis of the phosphate group from the sugar. This is notable as it does not produce energy the way the reverse kinase reactions do in the second half of the glycolytic pathway. Thus, there is no substrate level phosphorylation that occurs in the gluconeogenic pathway. Overall, there are approximately six molar equivalents of ATP required to make one mole of glucose. Over three times as much energy is consumed during glucose formation than is generated from glycolysis during the breakdown of glucose. Per glucose molecule made, two ATP are used in the pyruvate carboxylase step. Two GTP are used in the phosphoenopyruvate carboxykinase step. And two ATP are used in the kinase reaction to create 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate from 3-phosphoglycerate. There is also the loss of 2 moles of NADH during the reverse reaction to create glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, which reduces energy potential through oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. Plus, there are energy costs to changing the metabolite pools in the matrix of the mitochondria and for transporting molecules across the mitochondrial membrane that we have not considered here. With that, we will now leave our discussions of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. In the next lecture series, we will move into the matrix of the mitochondria 
and focus on the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain.